down in Atlanta, Georgia. Tonight, it's the Celtics against the Atlanta Hawks in Game 3. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gil Santos, along with Bob Cousy. And joining us tonight from the News at 10 on Channel 56, Bill O'Connell. The Celtics, a 2-0 lead in this best-of-seven series. Tonight, the third game, the first here in Atlanta with the Celtics up 2-0. And Coos, I guess the biggest reason that the Celtics have that 2-0 lead is the fact that they have held Dominique Wilkins to just 16 points per game in the first two games of this series, 14 below his regular season average. Part A of the question, how have they been able to do it? Part B, can they continue to do it? I think, frankly, it's been the, the key piece of strategy on Casey's part in, in this entire playoffs up to now, uh, changing the matchup, putting Kevin McHale on Dominique. I, I don't think Dominique's uh, recovered from the shock yet, and hopefully he won't uh, start tonight. But it's, uh, it's completely neutralized the NBA's leading scorer in Dominique. He averaged 30 a game during the season. He's averaging 16. More importantly, perhaps, it's caused so much confusion amongst the front line, the Atlanta front line, because they look around, they've got people guarding them that they're not guarding. So when it comes transition time and they've not get back on defense, that split second they're losing in picking up their, their uh, defensive yep. assignment is causing our break to be much more effective. So two things, they've got to get Dominique into the flow tonight, and they've got to up-tempo the game. All right, and Bill, uh, the things you'll be doing for us tonight. Well, at halftime, we'll be looking at the uh, scores, of course, of the other two games, which both start after hours, so there won't be too much to report on that. We'll have some highlights from last night's games. And then right after the game, of course, on the News at 10, Gil will be coming live from the Celtics dressing room, which may be fun, and <laughs> interview some of the players and their reaction to tonight's game. All right, and Coos, the Doc Rivers situation, he has not played as well in this uh, series as he did against the Celtics in the regular season. Is that the Celtics playoff experience and the lack of same on Rivers and the Hawks part? Perhaps it's a little of both. I think that's the other thing that's hurt the Hawks, however, other than Dominique's uh, underperforming, is the Rivers, I think, is primarily responsible for their turnaround in mid-year and doing so well. He's got to be hitting from outside and penetrating. He's penetrating, but he's not hitting from outside, so the defense is playing way off and it's affecting uh, his penetration. He's not doing it as well as he normally does. All right, Bill, what kinds of things have you noticed so far in this two-game set? Well, Wilkins, uh, obviously, inability to hit, whether it's a defense or, or he's just in a slump, it, probably number one. But the, the guys, the two guys I've enjoyed watching more, Kevin McHale and Danny Ainge, I think they're both playing great. And I, I have more kick out of watching them, and other than Bird, for a change. Uh, you know, I like McHale and Ainge better uh, right now. Because uh, as we get to the McHale and Ainge, uh, situation that Bill mentioned. Larry Bird appears to be shooting less in this series, looking for his shot less than he did during the regular season. The goodies are more spread around. Well, it's predicated on what Atlanta's doing. They've been trapping down early in the game. When they trap down, we shoot layups because of our passing game. When they stop trapping down, then they go to the isolation on Bird on a one-on-one -on -one situation, and that's when he starts to look for a shot. Up to then, he's passing off. So it, it's as I say, his uh, actions out there are predicated on the defense that uh, Mike Fatillo is using. The Celtics with a 2-0 lead in this series of averaging 111 points per ball game against the Hawks. Atlanta only 99. That's a 12-point advantage in these two games. Oddly enough, in the regular season, the Celtics beat Atlanta six in a row, but beat them on average only five per game. So the Celtics are playing better in the playoffs against the Hawks than they did even during the regular season. So Boston has the 2-0 lead, and tonight they look for a 3-0 lead. If they win tonight, the series could end on Sunday. If the Hawks win tonight, well, the whole thing could go back to Boston tied at 2-2. Two and two. So I guess this is indeed the pivotal game of this series. The Celtics and the Atlanta Hawks coming up next here on Channel 56. We'll have the starting lineups and the ball game. We'll be right back. That was uh, Cody Flanagan with our national anthem here at the Omni in Atlanta. There are 4,000 fewer seats in this building this evening. Uh, big convention being held in town has taken over a good section of the Omni. It's uh, just to our right, and uh, that has taken away those 4,000 seats in that corner. Uh, you can see it in the background of your picture. It's uh, the, the end of the arena totally away from the... Uh, from, from the picture as you look at it. And I think, quite frankly, it's gonna make the place noisier because they've got a big sound stage over here off to our right. And uh, that may be just trapping the sound of the 12,000 people who are in here and compressing it a little tighter. All right, the Celtics are starting five. Larry Bird is averaging 26 points a game in this series, along with 10 rebounds per game. Kevin McHale averaging 23 points a ball game in the series, 
and shooting from the floor at 63%. He's just been eating the Hawks alive in this series. Robert Parrish at center, 15 and a half points per ball game, nine rebounds per game in the series. The starting guards, Danny Ainge, naturally he gets booed by the Atlanta fans. They boo him because a 6'10 guy took a shot at him on Sunday and Danny retaliated. Danny playing very well in the playoffs at 15 and a half a game. Dennis Johnson, his usual outstanding self, 15 points per ball game. Uh, let's see, he's averaging four rebounds per game and in assists, he's had 23 assists in two ball games. That's nearly 12 a game and just an outstanding series being played by Dennis Johnson. Now the Atlanta Hawks starting five. It'll be Randy Whitman and Doc Rivers at the guards. Now, Whitman is actually playing a little bit better in the playoffs than he had during the regular season, but not against the Celtics. He's averaging 15 and a half against the Celtics, did much better against the Detroit Pistons. The other starting guard, Doc Rivers, is just nine and a half per game against the Celtics and only 11 assists in two ball games. That's only five and a half per game. He averaged up near nine in the regular season. The starting center is Tree Rollins, not a big score, eight and a half points per ball game, and has not been a big uh, guy blocking shots, only had two block shots in the two games. They're starting forwards, Dominique Wilkins, and he's, as we were talking before the game, that's Kevin Willis, rather, the seven-footer. He's having the best playoff series of the Hawks at 20 and a half points per game and nine rebounds, but Wilkins is the key, averaging only 16 a game, and in order for Atlanta to win, as they did during the season when they won 50 games, there's the NBA Coach of the Year as announced tonight, Mike Fratello of the Hawks. But they won 50 games on the regular season, Coos, mainly because Dominique averaged 30 points a ball game. The, Our officials uh, there, by the way, Jake O'Donnell and Joe Crawford. Yeah, a couple of veteran officials tonight, which is always good away from home in front of a hostile crowd. You like to have guys who have been around. The, the biggest fake out of the series, I think, is, uh, as we said on top, Mikhail going on Wilkins. Wilkins keeps saying in the paper that he's getting his shots. He's just missing them. He's getting the shots. The Celics are faking them out. He's getting the shots they want to give him. Well, they They've keep forcing him, him in the middle, inside. too. They've slowed his tempo down. He is at his best in a wide open type of game. The Celics have not allowed him to play that, and they've given him outside. They, ironically enough, by giving him the outside shot, it works against their overall offense because he comes down and takes the quick one, and that's what you're not looking for in half-court basketball. Larry Bird steals the opening tap. It was controlled by Tree Rollins, but Bird got into the path of the ball, and the Celtics on offense as we start the basketball game here in the Omni in Atlanta tonight. It's a sellout. McHale in low. Turn around, two. Hey, he's been like as sure as death and taxes inside and throughout the playoffs against both Chicago and Atlanta. Wilkins, and we have a whistle and a foul called by Joe Crawford on Kevin McHale as he tried to get in the way of Dominique who was going to the hoop. Again, he's giving him room from outside, but Wilkins, using his explosive speed, was able to at least pick up a foul, even though he didn't get by him. All right, Doc Rivers and now Randy Whitman for Atlanta. They get it to three. Rollins and Ainge slaps the ball away. Atlanta's down to 12 on the shot clock. And right now, Atlanta offensively looks to be trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. They missed jump shot by Doc Rivers, but they certainly looked as though they were out of their offense in that opening sequence. When you depend on your superstar to get you 30 a game all season long, and all of a sudden, Bird three. in the corner for three. three. All of a sudden, he becomes neutralized. It makes everyone else tentative, and that's what's happening to Atlanta. Ball is knocked out of bounds. It'll be Hawk ball. We have played a minute here at the Omni with the Celtics on top five to nothing. They have outscored Atlanta 111 to 99 average in these two games. And are we going to get a five-second call? No, no I think uh, no. Ainge kicked it out Ainge of bounds. kicked the ball. So they reset the 24-second clock. And Wilkins will put it in play on the far side of the floor. Here's Dominique. And now Doc Rivers for Atlanta. Celtics with a 5-0 lead. A minute played here in game three. And again, the Hawks appear to be trying to figure out where to go. Rivers with Ainge on him. Rivers trying to work his way inside and lays it in. That's what he does well, as we were saying on top, and he has not been doing enough of that uh, as far as uh, Atlanta is concerned. Of course, the Selleck defense by Ainge has had a lot to do with that. McHale, a couple of up fakes, and then the jump, no. Robert Parrish, an up fake, ball slapped out of his hands by Rivers. We're going to reach in foul on Dennis Johnson. Good Second job. team foul in the Celtics. Good, Good defensive job. job. Rivers, yeah. Robert with the big offensive rebound. 
And Rivers comes in underneath and just strips him. There it is. Then gets after, gets fouled by DJ. DJ trying to get the, uh, the steal back, but unsuccessfully. Two team fouls on the Celtics. A 5-2 Boston lead. Dominique trying to look for some room to maneuver on McHale. Instead, goes up from 20 feet. He doesn't have to go out that far to get that shot. Kevin will give him 18, 16, maybe even 17 feet to keep him from driving to the basket. When he does drive, then the rest of the Celtics are waiting for him, so they've pretty much shut off his inside game completely. All right, Ainge working it to Dennis Johnson. They look for McHale low again. Now they double on McHale. That leaves Johnson open for the 16-footer. And the rebound to Wilkins. They haven't been settling for the outside jumper on the trap down. They've been going for the layup. Wilkins coast to coast. That's the game he needs. The wide open full court game. That time he just outran the Celtic defense. High DJ for the Celtics. They lead by one. They go bird back door. We've got a whistle and no basket. Foul called on Atlanta on Dominique Wilkins as Bird got tripped up down on the baseline. Look there at it again. Is. There's that little dummy play where Bird goes back door along the baseline. He makes a spectacular move out of it, but the basket was uh, nullified. Comes inbounds to Robert Parrish. He picks up the smaller man, Whitman. Now they double-team him. Bird. Oh, look at the lightning-like pass. They went out of bounds off Parrish. The pass was there. Caught Robert by surprise. Fox with a chance to take the lead now. Boston up by one. Nine and a half minutes to play, first quarter. Wilkins, blocked by Bird, picked up and ran home by Kevin Willis. I'll tell you, the emotion on the part of Atlanta is running very high. Sellers got to hang blocked in. Blocked by Wilkins, or Willis. Willis was the man who blocked it, and a foul is called on Tree Rollins. He got the man with the body. Well, that's the end of it. Willis comes over and gives Tree a little help, but by then he's already picked up his... Foul on uh, McHale. That will send Kevin to the line. Kevin has not been shooting particularly well. He's done everything else in this series. Foul shots have been but, way off. Uh, he hasn't been shooting well from the free throw line. One more free throw for McHale. Celtics lead it by, or are tied at 6-6. Six six. McHale looking for the one-point lead. He's perfect on it. So the Celtics are up by one. 9.15 to go, first quarter. Game number four will be on Sunday here in Atlanta. Rivers for Atlanta. Now they've got a double low post as they stack Wilkins and Willis. Bird the rebound. He found the opening, but then he didn't pull the trigger. He uh, never released the shot. Doc Rivers on Dennis Johnson. And now Bird. Of course, Wilkins has to work on the defensive end with Bird. Ball is slapped away again. McHale picks up the loose one and lays it in. Wow. That was Rivers again getting his hands on the pass. They doubled on Parrish immediately. Very physical uh, play that time down. McHale just tore it away. Spectacular by Dominique Wilkins. That's what they've got to try to avoid. Dominique, you know, getting a run of two or three baskets uh, quickly that way. Atlanta flying high here in the early moments. Doc Rivers all the way back. Lays it in. And Atlanta leads by one, 10 to 9. How well the Celtics sustain the opening adrenaline here in the exactly. first quarter will, I think, give us a real clue as to what's going to happen They've tonight. They've just got to hang in tough uh, and wait for the second half to come. McHale dropping it off to Bird for the layup. As the pass was smothered inside but went to the hands of McHale and he was able to get it to Larry Bird. Wilkins outside. Robert the rebound. See, that's fine. If they can encourage the first quick shot from outside on the part of Wilkins, uh, that's what they're looking for. They don't want him to penetrate. Ains way off, and then he gets knocked to the floor by Whitman. Rivers comes back. Celtics by one. Willis from the corner. Another rebound for McHale. Atlanta getting no second shots in this one. Dennis Johnson for the Celts. Off to Larry Bird. Kicks it to Ains. He hits. Celtics lead 13 to 10. Seven minutes and 15 seconds left in the first quarter of play. And this joint is very, very loud. This is the tempo Atlanta wanted in the first couple of games. It's a question of whether they can go 48 with this kind of up and down situation and uh, the lack of real good strength or fine baseline move by Wilkins. He just outquit Kevin McHale that time. It's a question of whether they can uh, do it for 48 with their bench or lack of bench. 
There's a timeout on the floor. Six minutes and 52 seconds left to play. First quarter, the Celtics are up by one. Bounded by Larry Bird to Dennis Johnson. Celtics up by one point. Just under seven minutes to play first quarter. Atlanta playing very physically and with a lot of emotion here in the first quarter. Bird from 18, 20 feet. No, the rebound by Tree Rollins. The Hawks a very young team. Rollins, the only veteran who has really seen extensive playoff action before. Kevin Willis and Atlanta leads by one. Willis, a good-looking seven-foot power forward who everyone is predicting is going to be an all-star before much longer. He, uh, he's been responsible for the Atlanta success. Parrish hits over him. Robert on that turnaround rainbow gives the Celtics the one-point lead again with six minutes to play in the first. Yeah, I think Willis is a, just an outstanding young player. He's got to develop some offensive moves, but he does about everything else. Uh, uh, draws the second foul on McHale, I think, if it's on Kevin. It is on Kevin McHale, his second personal foul. They sent the trap in quickly on Dominique that time on a high post, and it pushed him. The pressure from the trap pushed him away from or back into Kevin. That's what caused the foul. He, uh, Kevin had him forced the other way. One more free throw for Dominique Wilkins, who has tied the game at 15. And it remains tied at 15. Parrish the rebound, just under six minutes to play here in the first quarter. Dennis Johnson for the Celtics. If they, can, uh, if they can keep up this tempo, Atlanta, Dominique uh, is going to have a big night. Dominique fell down, that left Bird wide open, and so he buries it. And the Celtics are up by two. Wilkins looking for the big night. He's got eight points points now in the ball game for Dominique Wilkins though he is certainly off to a much better start than either one of the first two games at the Garden. McHale trying to wheel on Rollin and he does. Nice move by Kevin McHale. Hey, he just keeps coming up with new moves. I'll tell you, they've tried Rollins on him, they've tried Conkak on him, and they've tried Willis on him, all with the same degree of success or lack of it. Bird and Ainge, two-man fast break. Danny lays it off to Bird. Beautiful, beautiful ball. Standing. Ball handling, passing exchange on that two-on-one. Wilkins comes right back. Now he tried to do a little bit too much with that one. The ball just bounced finally into the hands of Rollins, who laid it in. Well, the first couple of games, they passed, they forced him into a passing game when he penetrated. With a 20-second timeout on the court, let's pause for this. In Alfred Hitchcock's... Uh, the thought that you were starting there a moment ago. Uh, I was saying that they, part of the strategy is he's getting frustrated by giving Wilkins the outside shot. He's getting frustrated, so now he's trying to force it to the basket. And the way they're collapsing behind, they're forcing him into a passing game, which is somewhat unnatural for Wilkins, because all season long, he's doing his magnificent thing, but it always ends up in his taking the shot. He's had to become a passer in the first two games, and he doesn't do that as well. It's alien to him. All right, the Celtics with a two-point lead. Four minutes, 45 seconds left. First quarter, Ainge all the way to the basket. Beautiful. He's been doing a lot more of that over the last, uh, well, last month of the regular season and in the playoffs than he ever had before. He's and he's got the quick enough step to do it. Uh, he's underappreciated as a player, and he's overabused <laughs> relating to his so-called bad guy image, as far as I'm concerned. They get it to Kevin Willis. Jellick by four. Willis sweeping in. Ball was on the rim. Into the hands of Bird. Quickly to Dennis Johnson. They're four on three. Bird on the wing. To regroup now. Bird is doubled up. Parrish is low. Fancy move. He is fouled by Trey Rollins. Celtics continue to pass the ball with incredible swiftness and crispness. They're just not able to cope with this kind of pick and roll and give and go moves that the Celtics have been able to lay on them in three games here. And this primarily is because the Celtics have such an outstanding passing game. You know, it's, uh, it's not Bird. It obviously, when he's on the bench, it, it somewhat affects their overall passing game. But now with the addition of Walden, I think it's encouraged Robert to become a better passer as well. He's looking for opportunities that he didn't look for on the pass now on the weak side. Kevin's always done a good job. Of course, Dennis and Ainge. 
uh, it's very difficult to play the Celtics. Uh, you know, especially in terms of those trap downs. When you trap down somewhere, you leave yourself vulnerable and the Celtics shoot layups. Celtics now with a six-point lead, their biggest of the game. The best and latest information we have is that Bill Walton will see some action tonight. He had a problem with a strain left knee bang in game two. But they hope to be able to get him some action this evening. Bird for the Celtics, and now Ainge. On a post up, Whitman, baseline, no, rebound, Kevin Willis. Good basket by Whitman there. He hasn't gotten many hoops penetrating, but he shot very well from outside in the first couple of games. 360 by Dominique. Dominique has been outstanding in this first quarter, but again, it's the tempo he needs. Uh, unless the sellers can slow it down, why uh, look for him to be in at least the 30s, I would say. Celics have beaten this club eight times in eight tries this season. Six in the regular season and the two in the playoffs. Down to five seconds on the shot clock. McHale, beautiful pass to Paris. He is fouled by Doc Rivers. And I'll tell you, what great passing. That's what we were talking about just a minute ago. You know, the passing game has become completely contagious. It's always been good. This season, it seems to be outstanding. That is McHale going up in the air, under pressure, making a very difficult pass in the traffic to Parrish. Spud Webb has checked in, replacing Doc Rivers. Concat came in a moment or two before that, replacing Rollins. This program authorized under telecasting rights granted by the Boston Celtics solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication rebroadcast or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Boston Celtics and WLVI-TV is prohibited. Celtics by three points. Just under three minutes left in the first quarter. Little guy Webb, the only positive thing in the first couple of games is his play in the third quarter and partially uh, into the fourth in the last game. He really got him going. Dominique continues from outside. And the Hawks are back to within one. See, what's opened up his outside game now is obviously the fact that he's gotten a few uh, hoops penetrating, and uh, now he's got the hot hand going. Now they want Ainge to post up on Webb. They double-team him. Ainge misses the shot. Rebound, Concat. Here comes Spud. Kicked it off. Ainge steals it. Boston ball. Foul in Atlanta. Foul on Dominique Wilkins. Reaching in from behind on Ainge. And a timeout has been called by the Atlanta Hawks. Two minutes, 20 seconds left to play. First quarter of the Celtics holding on to a one-point lead. has 13 points for Atlanta. Larry Bird with nine and Kevin McHale eight for the Celtics. Top rebounder in the game is Robert Parrish with four. Ainge at the line to shoot two as the foul on Wilkins has put Atlanta over the limit. Danny gets everyone's attention and uh, doesn't work. You That's know, his first free throw attempt of this series. I keep talking about uh, this is the tempo Atlanta wants or prefers this is the way they've got their best shot at the sellers it doesn't mean that the sellers don't like an up-tempo game they do and they run it very well but uh, Atlanta doesn't have the shooters to beat the sellers in a slow down game as uh, was proven in the first couple Dennis Johnson has been called for an illegal defense violation that's the first one against the Celtics and so it's uh, just a possession call. The next one will result in a technical. Cliff Levingston is in for the Hawks now. He'll be inbounding. And he has come in to replace Dominique Wilkins. He's a big, strong kid on the boards. you got to keep him off the boards. Not a good shooter, but a very physical player. Foul at the other end has been called on Dennis Johnson. And, uh, oh, he's calling a flagrant foul on DJ. Nice Seemed like he was calling a two-shot foul. Yeah, it did. Yes, he has called a flagrant foul. But that is not automatic uh, no. banishment no, for the it's, game. it's in the official's uh, discussion or judgment to make that call. If he chooses, I, it's an unusual call to make, especially on DJ, who, you know, that's really not as big. Jerry Seasting getting set to check in for the Celtics. One more free throw for Cliff Levingston. He gets them both. And so once again, it's a one-point ball game with two minutes left to play in the first quarter. Celtics had one of their best games of the regular season here in Atlanta when they were behind by 22 at the half and then came on to beat the Hawks in overtime. Ainge trying to post up Spud Webb, and he does. 
He's taken him low now twice. Celtics by three. Rebound, Boston. Slapped around and out of bounds. Off of Atlanta. Boston ball. Seasting will come in. And he... Celtics have too many people on the floor. Yep. Sorry, guys. Hey, it's all right with us, but I think you better uh, try it with five for a while longer. Now, Ainge will come out, and Seastine is in. You know, this is one of the problems. Uh, Fatello took a lot of criticism on Sunday for taking Webb out after he got the boys running and established some momentum. But, of course, one of the ways it hurts them is what you've seen the last couple of times now with Ainge posting up. So you've got to use Webb uh, at certain times and, you know, let him get things started, but don't push your luck with him. Jerry Seastine hits his first shot. A 20-footer from behind the foul circle. The Celtics go back up now by four. 31 to 27. Minute and 10 seconds left here in the first quarter. Spud Webb for the Hawks. And they, without Dominique on the floor now, who's sitting down for a bit of a rest, are not the same offensive team at all. Not even close. Because they've got no one who's even uh, looking for a shot. I was just going to say, a good opportunity here for the Celtics to uh, develop a little bit of a lead because they have... Four non-shooters in there. Whitman's the only guy who can find the hole. They finally get it inbounds to Concak, and Seastine steals it out of his hands. It's picked up by Webb. Two on the shot clock, and he scored it. Concak, just as the shot clock was about to expire. I take that back. You become a shooter when you're directly over the basket at seven generally. feet. But, you know, you got to push him out a little ways. Parrish trying to work on Willis. Gets it up and in. Robert Parrish. Good pivot move by Parrish, extricating himself from the double team pressure there and creating a shot. On the other end, Webb has it blocked. Bird keeps it in play to Parrish with a great play by Larry Bird. Seastine to Dennis Johnson. They get it low to Parrish, the up fake, and he is fouled by Cliff Levingston on the up fake. Selix have gotten into the flow. They may not have to wait for this adrenaline on the part of Atlanta to ease off because uh, they're working every bit as hard and emotionally as uh, Atlanta right now. Watch this play by Bird. First they block blocks, the shot. Yeah, Parrish blocks the shot. There it is. In your face, little guy. Don't come in here. This is our territory. Yeah, we don't see Bird save it, but he made an exceptional athletic move. One more free throw coming for Robert Parrish. Celtics leading 33-29. 26 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Chief gets one of the two, and the Celtics are up by five. Their biggest lead of the quarter has been six. Atlanta's biggest lead has been one. The good news is that they've established a lead despite an outstanding quarter on a part of Wilkins and 13 points. Spud Webb now just... Controlling the basketball as the clock ticks down to 12 seconds. You see it in the uh, middle of your I've said this Top before. I never understand why the team that's behind holds it. Webb. Webb not normally a pretty good, a good outside shooter. Gets a pair. Bird from about 70 feet over the top of the backboard. We have finally found him outside his range. <laughs> 70 feet. He shouldn't go out that far. At the end of one at the Omni, the Celtics are up by three in game three, 34 to 31. There are your top scorers in the ball game so far. Kuz, the Celtics leading by three after one, and quite frankly, Atlanta either not playing with as much opening emotion as I thought they would, or the Celtics matched it step for step the whole quarter. I'll tell you, they, Atlanta had give the nod in the opening rounds, but uh, towards the end of that first quarter, why uh, Celtics had much more emotion going for them. When you're going to get yourself high for a game, you've got to do it defensively and on the boards, not necessarily on the offense, and that's what Atlanta didn't do. Blunkett stuffs it in, and he's fouled by Larry Bird. Oh, that's a good move there. A little guy Webb on the Celtic pick and roll. We were talking about a moment ago. Watch this. There it is. They looked to trap Webb. Parrish was going over to help Danny. That released contact to the basket. Webb instinctively felt the big guy going in and jumped up and gave him a nice pass. Concac at just two and a half points per game in this series. Misses the shot, but it goes to the hands of Randy Whitman, and he rattles it home. And Atlanta with the first two baskets of the second quarter, and they lead by one. For the Celtics, Scott Wedman is in, Kevin McHale is out, and we've been informed uh, that it is now possible that 
Bill Walton will not play at all tonight. Bird on the turnaround backs it home. I think that's a very wise decision. Uh, it's going to be a long series. Obviously, the seventh against L.A., and we're assuming that's going to take place. It's a bit more important to rather than aggravating Walton's knee at this point. All right, Celtics by one. One minute is gone here in the second quarter. Whitman, good outside shooter. Nothing but net for Randy Whitman. Atlanta retakes the lead. He's averaging 20 in the playoffs, Whitman, so he's got a good playoff. Whitman answers back off a nice pass by Bird. They find Whitman open again. Not this time. Rebound, Seastein. Celtics fast break it, and the ball is slapped away and picked up by the Hawks. And now Concac gets it off to Scott Hastings, who has checked in. Let's set the five for it. Atlanta has Webb out there with Hastings, Concac, Levingston, and Randy Whitman. Concac muscles in. It's blocked and a whistle and a five. The kid's got a lot to learn yet, but I tell you, he uses his body very effectively. Uh, he protects the... He, He's combination bull here, but he, see, he steps in, establishes the contact, but then he protects. He keeps his body between Robert and the ball, and in order to get back, you know, once the charge wasn't called, in order to get back into the play, uh, Robert literally had to foul him. This is the first foul on Robert Parrish, the second on the Celtics as a team here in the second quarter. Atlanta hasn't committed any yet. There are the statistics for Concac on the season against the Celtics. In the playoffs, a little different. He has not been scoring nearly as much as we mentioned a moment ago. All right, we're tied at 38. Atlanta's hit three out of four shots so far in this quarter. Bird with Levingston on him. And a whistle, basket, and now Parrish and Hastings are going at each other. And Robert is very upset. Yeah, he's... And Hastings backs away. Of course, Robert is the same size as Hastings. Jake well, is uh, just trying to cool yeah. Robert down. Well, Paris is saying, hey, Jake, that's fine, but I just got club in the mouth, and you're telling me to calm down and you don't call a foul, you know. All right. Mike Patello and Robert. That's the most upset, you know, I've seen Robert get. The big guy doesn't lose his cool too often. There it is. You see Hastings move him out? Look yeah. At just threw his shoulder into it and evidently got a little bit of his uh, Now, the foul, jaw. foul was called on Hastings. Foul was called. Also, oh, he but, did but, make the yeah, call. But it took away the bird basket. Or it came before the bird shot. Larry pops it anyway. Well, that was the late action there. He wanted a pass. The target uh, didn't develop, so he still was able to hang in there and take the shot. Doc Rivers getting it low to Concac. Concac is doubled up, and Seastein steals it, but a foul on Jerry Seastein. And that'll be the third team foul on the Celtics in this quarter. Danny Ainge getting set to come back in for the Celtics. And Danny will replace Seastein. The game is starting to get a little sloppy now and a lot more physical because the two speedsters, Wilkins and Rivers, are both out of there, so the flow has been affected. This team still wants to run with Webb leading the attack, but they don't do it with quite as much finesse, obviously. All right, Rivers has checked back in for Atlanta, and he has replaced Randy Whitman. Webb, and now Doc Rivers from Marquette, is not hit, Bird gets the rebound. Whistle and a foul. Yeah, uh, Theon Bird, he moved uh, Hastings out of the play under the uh, backboard. Hastings had a good inside position. That'll be the second on Bird. And the fourth on the Celtics as a team, so they're at the limit. Watch Bird, well, you, you don't see it. You see Hastings kind of being moved to the other side of the basket. McHale is out back in for the Celtics, and Parrish goes out, and we have what do we have here? Well, judging by Bird's reaction, it may be his third. Two quick ones. Joe you know, Crawford hits Bird with two quick fouls in succession. Also, and this will put the uh, Hawks at the line. Yeah, also sends them over the limit to Selleck. So, Concac will go to the line. John Concac shooting two. Normally not a good foul shooter on the regular season, only at 60%. Uh, he misses the first one. He'll get one more. Bird comes out, and Greg Kite is in, so Walton 
has yet to see action and at this uh, juncture it probably uh, is a safe bet that he won't be seeing any action tonight I think if we got down to the last couple of minutes yeah. in Casey's judgment you know it meant the difference between uh, winning or losing the game he'd use them but uh, I don't think he's going to do it prematurely a contact is uh, true to his normal foul shooting gets neither one Kite gets the rebound and the Celtics come down trailing or uh, leading by two Dennis Johnson has Doc Rivers on him Dennis takes him inside and nails it the DJ posts up as well as any guard you'd want to see. He really makes a science out of it. We have a foul this time going the other way on Atlanta. Hastings and McHale getting into it. Well, Hastings obviously is just out there to smack people around. Well, he knows what's going to impress the coach. You know, he's uh, he's a marginal player who uh, from year to year can go to a lot of different teams. And obviously, if he wants to stay in Atlanta, he knows the way to do that is to muscle a little bit. Celtics, by the way, have hit all four shots they've taken from the floor here in this quarter. McHale, now Ainge, corner three-pointer, yes, three for Danny Ainge. Whew. And the Celtics open up a seven-point lead, their biggest of the ball game. Dominique has checked back in for the Hawks, and now Webb. Rebound, Greg Kite, loose ball foul, Atlanta. Celtics now up by seven. They have run seven unanswered points in the Hawks as this game was tied at 38. And now we have, we have what? Now Webb is uh, checked out of the ball game. Okay. He has gone to the bench. And Whitman is back in for Atlanta. Celtics with a run of seven points in a row here. Bird is out for the Celtics. And Seastein is back in. McHale, little fall away. Nine in a row for the Celtics. And they lead the game by nine with eight and a half minutes to play in the first half. And Atlanta wants a timeout. So the Celtics run a nine shot on the Hawks. 8.22 to play. First half. It is Boston 47 and Atlanta 38. Dean Ainge, Kite, Wedman, and McHale. For Atlanta, Rivers, Whitman. Concac, Willis, and Wilkins. Celtics lead by nine. They've scored nine points in a row. Wilkins on the baseline, breaks the nine-nothing run. He might have made a little bit of a mistake keeping Wilkins out as long as he did. He did keep him out. He uh, kept him out for about six minutes, Coos. I doubt it. You know, it had anything to do with fatigue. He did pick up a couple of early fouls, but uh, that's very conservative thinking this early in the game. Age from 20 feet. Swish. Danny off to a very good first half in this one. That's uh, 12 points 12 in the points. game for Danny. Seven minutes, 40 seconds left to play here in the first half. Celtics equaling their biggest lead, nine. Atlanta has led once by a point. That was early on. Whitman for the Hawks. Now Dominique. He has 17 points as he's already won over his average for this series. Danny Ainge back for the Celts. Their lead is seven. The ball is slapped out of bounds by Concac, who's going to be called for a leaning foul on Kevin McHale. That'll be the third team foul on Atlanta. And it'll be a possession foul with Scott Wedman to put it in play. Tree Rollins back in for the Hawks. He replaces John Concac as Jake O'Donnell has something to say to Greg Kite. I'm afraid I missed what that was all about. Celtics red hot shooting in this game. They've hit 20 of 28. Fall away by McHale. No. Rebound. Loose ball foul. Greg Kite. And that'll put the Hawks at the line. As the Celtics are already over the limit. 7.05 to play in the half. That's the first foul on Greg Kite. Greg getting playing time tonight as you look at KC Jones. Bill Walton uh, strained knee. The Celtics being sure that uh, they don't want to take any chances with Walton in this one, so unless it uh, becomes, as Kuz mentioned, a factor with a minute or two to go that might help the Celtics win the game, I would suspect Bill is going to sit this one out. Yeah, I spoke to Case on that subject before the game, and that, uh, that seemed to be what he was saying, that you know he didn't want to use him, and unless he was really forced into it, why the percentage was to uh, save him for, for further rounds and not take a chance on... Uh, getting them hurt in a series that at least at the moment they've got under control two free throws go for doc rivers to cut the celtics lead to five points with seven minutes left in the first half mikhail for the celtics right into the hands of kevin willis who anticipated the pass very well and ainge steals it back at the other end 
And Ainge staying in the play. Came right in under the big seven-footer. That's why coaches <laughs> like to see those centers and anyone over 6'6", six, six, I'll tell you what, don't let them uh, Three dribble points. that thing if you have a choice. Three-point shot attempt by Ainge misses. Tree Rollins the rebound. Doc Rivers back for the Hawks, and now Dominique with 17 in this first half so far. Willis muscles in. Good job. He's a good-looking player. Kevin yes, Willis, seven-footer from Michigan State. He needs, one uh, needs a little variety in his arsenal. So far, he's doing it with pure muscle, height, strength, young legs, the whole thing. But once he develops some finesse, as we said earlier, he's going to be one of the premier power forwards in the league. Delic's down to eight seconds on the shot clock. McHale launches one and hits it. McHale is really uh, giving whoever guards him a lesson. Wilkins takes it Spectacular. Dominique Wilkins airborne for two, and the Celtics' lead is down to three points, 51 to 48. The only player in the league that can make those kind of acrobatic moves. Even Jay, uh, you know, in his young days. Goal wow. tending. Well, that's another one of the things the rookie's going to have, the second-year man's going to have to learn is when to go after that ball well past its apex Larry Bird going to the scorer's table and he'll check in for the Celtics Larry has three personal fouls he replaces Scott Wedden 14 points now for Kevin McHale he has been averaging 23 a game in this series Atlanta joins the long lists of teams in the NBA that haven't found a solution to even slowing McHale down. Whitman up over Ainge. No. Rebound Kevin Willis. Banks it in. Little fortuitous offense there. The ball just bounced into Willis's hands. Caught him by surprise, but of course he recovered from that in a hurry. Knew what to do with it. They go off to Parrish, but it's slapped away. Rivers. Ball on one. Yep. Goes to the long wing. Wow, Willis gets it, ball is slapped out of bounds, and a foul is called on Danny Ainge. No excuse for that on the part of an experienced point man. Four on one, uh, complete control of the situation, never established a layup. He went to Whit Whitman much too soon, went to the wrong man. He went to the guard instead of the big power forward here, or Wilkins on the left side. They're going to get two out of it, but uh, they should have had the two the easy way. Two free throws for Kevin Willis. First one goes. He's a 65% foul shooter in the regular season. One more for Willis, who in this series is at 72%. Weak team free throw shooting hurts you much more in the playoffs than it does during the season because generally the games are much closer in a playoff competition. And the shooting gets a little tighter as the rim gets a little smaller in the playoffs. Parrish has Willis on him. Robert over him for a rainbow. Rollins with a rebound. Selick's lead is only one point as Atlanta's come back. Rivers looking for the lead. Gets it. Beautiful. Boy, he made up for that move. He didn't have to have anyone tell him what to do on that penetration. Outstanding athletic move by Glenn Rivers. So after the Celtics ran nine in a row on the Hawks, Atlanta comes roaring back to take a one-point lead. Four and a half minutes left in the first half. The Hawks 54, the Celtics 53. Those restaurants of Boston and Braintree will be donating $10 of points scored by the Celtics in any Channel 56 televised playoff game. The money donated by Mr. Charlie Dulles will be donated to the Red Auerbach Fund. All right, let's take a look at Governor Michael Dukakis, the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, right down there on the front row, watching you. this one. He must know somebody. Yeah, huh? I guess he must. Like that at let's, the last minute. Let's have a little pull. <laughs> Larry Burrs for the Celtics, down by one. Larry has 14 points in the game, or 13 rather. McHale has 14. Dennis Johnson posts up Doc Rivers, and the Celtics are up by one. I'll tell you, DJ's gone in twice, and he's gotten a couple of hoops out of it. Celtics have Seastein, Johnson, McHale, Parrish, and Bird out there. Atlanta with Whitman, Rivers, Wilkins, Rollins, and Willis. Dominique on the miss, the rebound to McHale, and the Celtics come back leading by one. They're three on four right now. Bango, they lead by three. DJ is hit two straight. 3.50 to play, first half. Well, the Hawks wanted the uh, up-tempo game, and... I don't know if it's really worked in their favor so far. Certainly gotten Wilkins into the game much better than in the previous two, and it's opened up uh, Glenn Rivers a bit. 
But uh, the Celics have adjusted to the change uh, pretty effectively, too. Three great fakes by Dominique, and then he got loose to knock it home. Three and a half minutes to go. Celics by one. Bird. McHale. Jump pass to DJ. He's been hot. Not this time. Gets his own bound. Banks it. No. It's Robert. Up with it. McHale the tip. McHale the tip. McHale the tip. Ball loose. Finally picked up by Atlanta. Great yeah. offensive board work for the summer. Absolutely. It's a shame not to come out of that flurry with a couple because they completely dominated. Uh, everybody took a shot at it. They're keeping it alive and it rolled every way, but, uh, but in, unfortunately. Wilkins, the fall away. And the Hawks lead by one again. About unofficially 23 for Wilkins at this point, so he's finally giving him the big night that they uh, need out of their superstar forward in order to carry the offense. Parrish is fouled by Kevin Willis. That is the fourth team foul in Atlanta, so it is still only a possession foul. Wilkins' biggest game against the Celtics this season was 42 points. His biggest game against the league was 57. He can light it up and he can do it quickly because he's got a complete arsenal of offensive moves. A great pass by Larry Bird to Dennis Johnson who slipped in behind Doc Rivers. The other thing Dennis did once he was fun it completely was hold the man. You can't release and go for the ball too quickly on that. Especially if you know there's no help coming from the weak side. You got to hold him in, almost let the ball reach your uh, inside hand. And DJ did it very nicely. Foul coming the other way as Atlanta is called here. And it'll be Tree Rollins, offensive foul. So Tree goes to the bench, and John Conkak, the rookie from Arkansas, replaces him, or from SMU, replaces him. Oh, Rollins for Atlanta. really hasn't gotten much accomplished so far in the game. He's picked up a couple of fouls. He's only got two points, but he hasn't been the intimidating force defensively that you expect him to be. And he really hasn't done that much on the backboards. Bird try to go on Wilkins. They double him up. He falls away. Does not hit. Doc Rivers has it. Nearly palmed it, but didn't. Great spin move by Rivers. Oh, beautiful play by Doc Rivers. Now that time he went to the right man despite it being his uh, his guard Whitman, but he didn't force him to pull it to the floor and make the play himself. He brought it in as low as necessary and then gave it up to Whitman just in time to take that layup. Minute and 26 seconds left in the first half. Chief on the jumper. In and out. Ball loose. Bird has it to Parrish again. Robert spins and hits. Oh. Sweet move by Robert Parrish off the save ball by Larry Bird. Minute and ten to go in the half. Atlanta loses the handle. Rivers now with it. Play getting sloppy on Bird the part of Atlanta. Bird is by Kevin Willis, who just knocked him right to the deck. And that, is that an offensive foul or a flagrant foul? Well, I thought it could have been called a flagrant one. Take another look at it. Bird Let's is in the lower right. Look at that. Just whapped him to the ground. Not only that, but Willis is the guy that got upset, believe it or not. He <laughs> had a few things to say to Bird while he was on his back. Rivers on the steal and a great play and the foul by Johnson. Outstanding defensive play by Doc Rivers as Bird was trying to go baseline and Johnson trying to hit him with that fastball pass, but Rivers anticipated it beautifully. And as DJ does the uh, spot thing, Otherwise, Rivers has got a breakaway. It's a short two. He forces him to earn him from the line. Selleck's leading by one, 61 to 60, with 55 seconds left in the first half. Rivers missing the front end. Now it becomes even a better play. Doc Rivers, normally a 61% foul shooter, goes 0 for 2. Now it becomes a great play. Hawks get the offensive rebound. Rivers with it for Atlanta. That's Jerry Seastein on him. They loop the pass. Seastein slapping it away. Wilkins has it knocked out of his hands. Dominique fires anyway. Rebound Bird. With 30 seconds left to play in the first half, the Celtics have a one-point lead. We'll be talking to Casey as he comes out of the locker room, by the way, at halftime. That his thoughts on the first half of action. McHale has doubled up, so they swing the ball around. Johnson has it slapped out of his hands. DJ picks it back up. DJ, three-pointer. 
Good three-point shot. Dennis Johnson with 10 seconds left in the first half and the Celtics lead by four. 11 points for Dennis here in this second quarter. Rivers back. Misses it. Rebound. Whitman whistle. That is the end of the first half. It ends with a flourish on DJ's three-pointer. Outstanding second quarter for Dennis Johnson. So the first half of high adrenaline energy of the Atlanta Hawks sees them down by four at the half. And quite frankly, Coos, I expected things to be a little different. I thought Atlanta would come out really smoking and smoldering and grab an early lead on the Celtics and force Boston to come back. It's been the other way around. They did it offensively, but not defensively. That's the key. If you're going to get excited, do it on the defensive end, not on the offensive end. Boston by four at halftime. Celtics up at halftime here in Atlanta, 64 to 60. They did it off a 34-31 first quarter and a 30 to 29 second quarter to build this four-point lead at the half. The biggest Celtic lead of the first half was nine. That was when they ran nine in a row in Atlanta to break out of a 38-all tie. The Hawks came back with a 16 to six run to go ahead by one. The Celtics closed out the half with great shooting by Dennis Johnson to take a four-point lead. Very balanced scoring for the Celtics as we take a look at the team statistics in the first half of this one. The Celtics shooting well in the first quarter. Things uh, got a little cooler in the second quarter, but overall a good quarter, a good half of action for the Celtics. Now individually, Kevin McHale with 14, Larry Bird with 13, 12 for Danny Ainge, 11 for Dennis Johnson, 10 for Robert Parrish, all five Celtics starters in double figures in the first half of this one. Now when we come back, Bob Cousy will be chatting with KC Jones just prior to the second half. That and more coming up right after this. I'm here with Casey Jones. Coach, you got to be pleased. You were hoping to stay close the first half. You got yourself a bonus, a four-point lead. Yeah, yeah, uh, we're doing well. Uh, uh, the only thing that, that really bothers me is that we're giving them much too much inside. Wilkins going for layups, uh, Conkat getting in for little layups, mm -hmm. an offensive rebound, but uh, they have they've come back with a very very nice ball game and uh but we are as you said very lucky to be up by three points will we see walton under any circumstances no tonight? no no walton um said before the game it doesn't look good and i said well it's best that we just save you for another couple of days and rather than go with your 50 percent we want to see you as well as possible okay coach go get him thank you Back to Gil Santos for second half action. All right, the first half, the shooting statistics went this way. So far as the teams go, the Celtics 58.7% from the floor and 7 of 10 at the foul line. The Celtics with 21 rebounds in the first half and only six turnovers. Atlanta shooting even better in the first half than the Celtics, 59.1%. However, where the Hawks are having a problem throughout this series, they continue to have a problem in this game, and that is at the foul line. They have missed 7 of 15 foul shots, so they're only 53%. Coming into the game, they were only 65, so they're even below that, and that's where right now the Hawks are losing this thing. Rebounds, they're uh, just one under the Celtics at 20. Turnovers, only six for Atlanta in the first half of the ball game. Dominique Wilkins having a great game for the Hawks with 23 points. He's 11 of 16 from the floor. The only other scorer, however, in double figures is Kevin Willis with 10, whereas the Celtics have all five of their starters in double figures. Uh, leading off with McHale at 14, Bird at 13, 12 with Ainge, uh, 11 for Dennis Johnson, and 10 for Robert Parrish. So Boston continues to have the balanced scoring, and uh, Atlanta continues to try to get uh, Dominique to win the thing for him as you look at the playoff statistics through five games for the Celtics and through six that Atlanta has played. Because uh, nothing really jumps out at you on these stats with the exception of the foul shooting where Atlanta has missed seven times and that's the difference. Well, not only that, but they're shooting 59%. They were shooting 45% coming into uh, Ted Turner and Bob Whistler, former president, I guess, of CBS yeah. uh, sitting together. Yeah, you don't you don't beat a team by, like the Celtics uh, with a one-man offense. All with an up-tempo game without defensive compliments. And that's what they haven't done. Good penetration by Rivers, but they've got to add defense to this offensive explosion today, as otherwise uh, Celtics are going to be up three. Larry Bird, the only Celtic in personal foul trouble. He has three of them. Ainge, and now Bird from downtown. Puff. 66-62. Celtics maintain that four-point lead. We've played less than 30 seconds here in the third. Dominique, a three-pointer. He had time to measure that one. Wilkins' three-point shot brings the Hawks within one. 
Atlanta not using as Ainge buries a pair, not using the adrenaline that we thought they'd be getting from this sold-out crowd in the first half. But as Kuz mentioned, they have not used the adrenaline defensively, but have used it instead offensively and not in playoff basketball. It's been an offensive-dominated game. The Celtics haven't really dug in either. They're content to play the Atlanta game. As long as they don't dig in, they know they can outshoot them. They have just too many guns. Doc Rivers brings Atlanta back within one with ten and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Bird winds up from three. Yes, Larry Bird. Take that. Five points for Bird in the second half, and now he's up to 18. Both teams shooting free and easy, and that will not work in Atlanta's favor for the reasons we gave a moment ago. They just don't have uh, enough shooters to contend with the uh, all five of the Selleck starters are in double figures at halftime. The turnaround rainbow, no. The rebound to Danny Ainge. Ainge continues to have a very strong playoff in all areas, as all the Celtics are. The reaction to Danny, I thought, was uh, overdone, too. They really didn't, uh, you know, they made a big thing of it in the paper, but that really didn't occur. Three Rollins, the rebound, off to Dominique. The Hawks are three on two. Dominique, oh, Bird got his hands on it. Kevin Willis double pumps and lays it in. Good job. Willis found the handle, uh, eventually displaying good agility for a seven-footer and was able to put it away. Zellix lead, now two points at 71 to 69. McHale, now Bird in the deep right-hand corner. They find Parrish on the pick and roll. He has the ball stripped out of his hands by Randy Whitman. And it goes to Doc Rivers. With Dominique on the drive. Got a little fancy with it and missed it. Yeah, a lot of wasted motion there. Made a tough shot out of what should have been an easy one. Bird, three in a row in the second half for Larry Bird. Bird putting on a show here in the uh, early second half. He's, he's looking for his offense much more than he did early in the game. I think he senses that it's a shooter's game all of a sudden. It's developed into a shooter's game, you know. Don't have to get fancy uh, because Atlanta's giving him pretty much what they want. Uh, Willis now picked up by Johnson on the switch, and he just posts DJ up for two. A seven-footer, Kevin Willis. He got my vote as the most improved player in the league this year. McHale wheels in, and he is fouled by the very same. No, no, the foul's going to go on Doc Rivers. Yeah, Rivers dropped down and uh, reached in. They've, they've, done that, they've done that with a varying degree of success, uh, doubling down on the Selix big men. As we know, the, they've gotten a lot of offensive production, the Selix have, from the inside line. And when they haven't gotten that, every time they've doubled down, they've given up layups. So it's been strategy that's been uh, somewhat effective, but not as well as Patillo would like. Part of it is lack of speed and alertness. If you're going to double down, you've got to get your tail back quickly, you know, when, when uh, the trap doesn't work. They haven't been doing that. McHale's two free throws giving the Celtics a lead of four points now. It's 75-71 with eight minutes and 25 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Celtics have led at both stops the first quarter and at the half. They maintain that lead. Now DJ is switched off onto Wilkins from outside. Doc Rivers. And again, a two-point ball game. 8-10 to play in the third. Bird is hot with three in a row. Parrish doubled up, but turnaround rainbow, no. And Atlanta with a chance to tie it this trip. Whitman has become a very productive off-guard for the Hawks. Outstanding shooter. Played for Bobby Knight at Indiana. Moves very well without the ball. Uses those two low picks. Here he comes now. Rollins setting it up very well. Somewhat like Scott Wedman. Not that time for Rivers. Rebound Willis. Tie game. Well, the big guy did a job there. Went over a couple of Celtics. Not only got control, but then finished it off nicely. Seven and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter. At Atlanta's Omni. And the Celtics have a tie ball game right now. 75 apiece. DJ posts up Rivers. Rebound, Tree Rollins. Celtics have grown cold the last couple of trips down. Doc Rivers for two. And a, let's see, grabbing the rim, Dominique Wilkins on that Boston hoop, and that's a delay of game warning. We have a 20-second timeout on the court, so let's pause for this. Well, Kuz, the Hawks using a little adrenaline here in the third quarter to jump into a two-point lead as you take another look at Doc Rivers' penetration. 
Beautiful. Switched hands when he saw the McHale pressure coming over. Knew he couldn't get it up there uh, with his inside hand without getting a lot of defensive pressure. So he turned his body in midair. I'll tell you, this kid... You know, we speculated early in the season that the Atlanta turnaround coincided with this kid getting back into the lineup. Had a lot of problems. Broke a bone in his hand. Uh, broke his big toe. Uh, threw his back out. I'll tell you, he's had his problems this year, but he bounced back well here in the playoffs. Bird doubled up, finds Ainge open. Ainge, after the fake, fires and hits, and the Celtics have tied it. I got the feeling, Coos, that if the Celtics decide to turn on real defensive deny pressure that they exactly. could uh, really take control of this thing. They know that. That's why they're content to run and shoot with them uh, with the knowledge that when they want to uh, make the full defensive commitment, it should produce the results they want. Away from home, that doesn't always happen. No. Randy Whitman puts the Hawks up by two again, 79 to 77. What it does, too, of course, is neutralize momentum. Uh, right now, Atlanta has it in abundance. Ainge looking for Mikhail Lowe. Kevin trying to sweep in. Works it back outside. Now Parrish. Got the smaller man Rivers on him, but missed the shot. And a loose ball foul on the Celtics. On, on Kevin McHale. A timeout has been taken by the Atlanta Hawks. With 6-12 to play in the third quarter. And Atlanta's up by a pair. 79-77. Uh, well, we have some folks here from uh, Hull. They showed me that sign before the game. Atlanta, 9 of 12 in this quarter, so they are really shooting hot. That puts them uh, over 60% for the game so far. Wilkins on the miss. McHale had the rebound, but Willis knocked it out of bounds. Wilkins upset with himself. Did a lot of nice work inside there and inside to overpower Bird. Had a pretty good shot off. Just didn't drop down. Just under six minutes to play in the third quarter. Bird the jump pass to Parrish. It's blocked by Rollins. Into the hands of Dominique Wilkins, and here he comes. They double him up. Willis now low. Baseline. Atlanta leads by four. Boy, is that kid doing a job. Very impressive. Triggered by the Rollins defensive play, by the way, on Parrish. That's his first loud defensive play, but now he makes a stupid one by coming over the shoulder. Picks up his fourth, I believe. Three Rollins. That is the second team foul on the Hawks in the third quarter. The Celtics have one. And that is the fourth personal foul on Three Rollins. So he goes out and John Conkak comes in for Atlanta. Got to be upset with himself. Mike Patillo, the new coach of the year, up off the bench. Dennis Johnson from outside brings the Celtics within two. This four-point lead, by the way, that Atlanta held momentarily. Uh, their biggest lead of the game. The Celtics' biggest lead has been nine. We have 5-10 left to go in the third quarter. In this game, three, with the Celtics trailing 81-79. to There's the isolation. Ainge comes over to give Kevin uh, some help. Missed shot by Willis and Bird the rebound. Tough to go inside when you're trapped in the side because the defense behind all collapses inside. You're probably better off going on top for the little 15-foot jumper. That time he went into Willis and uh, it didn't go. Ainge three-pointer. That's the third three-point shot Danny has taken in this game. And I don't think that one was particularly well advised. Well, this will happen in a shooter's game. They say both teams are letting fly. You know? And right. you're right, it was a rather low percentage shot but the Celtics have been hitting very well from outside. Bird gets his hand in the passing lane. The ball goes to Dennis Johnson who was fouled by John Concat. The third team foul on Atlanta in this quarter and that could become a factor later on. 4.18 left to go in the third. Celtics are down by a pair. On Concat, by the way, that's his third. Yeah, not too bad because uh, hopefully they've withstood this uh, momentum that Atlanta has generated here in the third quarter, and they're still only two down. So let's throw it away. Well, both offenses uh, sputtering a bit. Uh, Dominique able to hang on to that pass. Sweet move, and that's got to be offensive interference. 
That's exactly what it is. Doc Rivers tried to ram it home. Offensive interference on the ball. Oh, that's got to be upsetting. Here's the Wilkins move. Watch them now. They're going to smother this basket. Well, look at that. <laughs> four, two, three, four white jerseys up there. All they got to do is tip it in, and they come away with nothing. Ainge. Now Larry Bird looking for Parrish. Parrish straight out to Ainge. DJ, left-hand side. No rebound. Doc Rivers, Celtics have hit a cold spell here in the third. They're down by two, three and a half minutes left. It's been a fast tempo. The teams may be tiring a bit. Maybe Dominique has cooled off in the third quarter as well. Ainge nearly carried it. In low, McHale. That's the guy to go to. I mean, he's, yeah. you know, he's two in the bank practically every time. Timeout taken by the Hawks. We're dead even with 3.13 to play in the third quarter at 81 apiece. To remind our viewers, Jimbo's Restaurants of Boston and Braintree donating $10 per point scored by the Celtics in any Channel 56 televised playoff game. Right now we're up to uh, $810. Money donated by Mr. Charlie Dillis will be donated to the Red Auerbach Fund. There's, There's the shooting yeah. percentage. Both teams red hot with the exception of the last couple of minutes here when they seem to both had a little bit of a cold spell. Willis, the ball slapped away by Bird. He got in the passing lane on the pass intended for Doc Rivers. Ainge back the other way, and now Bird for the Celtics. Fakes the pass. Bang! Larry Bird! I tell you, he is so tough. He started the play, and he finished it off. Great anticipation on that weak side pass. They tapped on the left side. When that happens, you look to the right side for the outlet. Bird just kind of faked him out. He stayed high, and then when the uh, longer pass was made, he just collapsed inside and took it down floor. Willis on the jump hook. Rebound to Robert Parrish. The Celtics have run six unanswered points on the Hawks here in the last minute of play. Ainge in the other direction for the Celtics. they got to be looking for Bird because he's hot. Again, not this time. Rebound, Doc Rivers. Dominique on the bench. Good time to get their four-point lead back. Celtics up by two. Two minutes to go in the third. Rivers, Whitman, Konkak, Levingston, and Willis for Atlanta. Whitman on the runner. Good solid player. He's the shooter in there at the moment. They can concentrate their attention on him. They're setting up those two low picks, and he just keeps using them. Doesn't have the ability to go back door, so you know he's going to pop out. You can play him for that. Levingston on Bird. They double up Larry Bird. That leaves someone open. It is Ainge straight away. Tries to whip the pass inside. Kicked away by Rivers. Larry Rivers has got those quick hands going. Be tough. Yeah, he's Whoa, a good player. He smell that ball out. He really has made some exceptional plays tonight. There it is. Whitman gets a hand on it first. Rivers moves in and almost strips McHale. As you can see, a little upset about the play. Rivers goes out. Bud Webb replaces him. Dennis Johnson buries a three-pointer. Wow. And the Celtics lead 86-83 with a minute and a half left in the third. Celtics responding to every Atlanta surge in this game, Coos. Every well, time Atlanta gets cooking, the Celtics have responded well to it. They're very seldom going to beat the Celtics in a purely offensive game. Unless you do your job defensively and on the boards. Now they've rebounded. Levington. Oh. Tough move by Levinson. He's a physical player, as we told you, and there's a demonstration of it. Uh, Atlanta rebounding much better tonight because they will rebound more effectively out of an up-tempo game as opposed to slow down. But they still haven't made that defensive commitment. Johnson trying to post up Randy Whitman. Does a 360 on him and whams it in. Dennis Johnson with a couple of big hoops in succession here in this third quarter. Celtics by three, 88-85, 45 seconds left in the third as you look at Spud Webb. See, so Ainge is giving him about five feet, forcing him to take this shot. Now, he's got Second that kind of range, hit. but he's reluctant to take it. He knows his strength is in his penetrating ability and laying the ball down. Bird after the up fake. No, rebound, McHale, ball on the floor, everybody for it, still rolling, Levingston saves it, ball out of bounds, off of, and let's see what's going on down there, Levingston went crashing into the table, and he's all right, good hustle hey, by Cliff Levingston. Broke the table in half, but oh, Cliff is okay, I'll tell you, <laughs> don't mess with Cliff, even when you're a table, there it is, someone get a handle on that thing, hit it with a or stick, a stick and kill it, uh, in any event, I think it's Boston ball, right? 
A timeout has been called with 27 seconds left to play in the third quarter, and the Celtics up by one, 88-87. Well, we have 27 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The Celtics with a one-point lead. Celtics have hit five three-point shots tonight. Dennis Johnson and Larry Bird with two apiece. Danny Ainge with one. Scoring leaders, Bird 22, McHale and Johnson 18 each, Ainge 16, Wilkins is 26, and Willis 18 for the Hawks, Rivers 16. Wilkins scored only three points in this third quarter. Seastein in for the Celtics, replacing DJ. Everyone becomes a shooter in a shooter's game like this, a run-and-gun type of uh, atmosphere. Even the mediocre shooters think uh, they become good, and, and normally they'll, they'll make shots that they uh, generally wouldn't. McHale misses on the turnaround. Rebound is out of bounds. It'll be Boston ball. Three seconds left to play in the third quarter. It'll be Celtics ball with Danny Ainge to inbounds for the Celtics. Quick pop, a high lob. Comes yeah, in to McHale. Lob, ball slapped away. Hastings. That is the end of three here at the Omni in Atlanta. After three quarters in game three, the Celtics hold on to a one-point lead. Scores. We start the fourth quarter. Kuz, normally in playoff basketball, the fourth quarter is a defensive quarter. Well, you've got talent and experience going against youth and emotion, so uh, let's see what happens. I think we uh, we might have to give the nod to the Celtics, however, because of the increased firepower and the, uh, the additional strength on the bench that they seem to have. Larry Bird now with 24, and the Celtics are up by three. The Celtics... Starting the fourth quarter, the ball is out of bounds off Scott Hastings. Celtics starting the fourth quarter with Seastine, Ainge, Parrish, Bird, and Wedman. Atlanta with Webb, Whitman, Hastings, Concac, and Cliff Levingston. Scott Wedman is open for an instant. No, Bird, the offensive rebound, loose ball foul on Spud Webb. Would you believe, Goos, that during the regular season, Spud Webb blocked five shots? After watching him in Dallas, I don't believe anything that little guy can do. Uh, or any stories. Oh, he was right up there with Bird. Yeah, See that? He's 5'7". Five, 5'7". Seven. Five What's his vertical leap? Very tall. Very high. <laughs> he got up there with Certainly Bird. 46. Eh? A minute has gone by in the fourth quarter. Bird gets Dominique in the air, launches the shot. And Larry will be going to the free throw line as Dominic Wilkins picks up the second Atlanta team foul and his third personal. Celtics have gone to this in the second half of each Atlanta game so far. They've, they've gone inside early. They've contended with the trap down by Atlanta. Then when Atlanta stopped trapping down, they start isolating uh, Bird on the right side or McHale inside. That time we saw the isolation... Uh, Bird taking Wilkins one-on-one, -on -one, and Dominique has not really been able to do much with him in, uh, in this situation. Kevin Willis has replaced Scott Hastings for the Atlanta Hawks. 11 minutes to play in the game. The Celtics by four. The Celtics by five. Bird now with 26. I think if uh, the Celtics win tonight, you can look for a uh, four-game series because if Atlanta has a shot at it, I think it'll be this one. With a 20-second timeout on the court, let's pause for this. This is the biggest lead the Celtics have enjoyed in quite a while in this ballgame. The third quarter, Atlanta had outscored the Celtics 27 to 24, and they led at several points in the third quarter, at one point at a four-point lead. Celtics came back to lead by one, but now have upped it to five. They've scored uh, four unanswered points here in the fourth. But Tello said before the game they had to push the ball up floor and establish up tempo. They had to rebound better. They had to play better perimeter D and go inside and set good screens for Wedman and uh, Whitman, excuse me, and Dominique. They did three of those, but they certainly didn't uh, play better defense. Robert Parrish muscling that rebound down as Wilkins has just checked back in for Atlanta. Good defense on Wilkins in low, and then Paris just strong off the board. Ten and a half minutes to go in the game. Ames gets it in low to Robert Parrish. He wheels on Rollins. No rebound by Tree Rollins. And a whistle and a reach-in foul on Jerry Seastein. 
Let's reset the Hawks for you. They've made some substitutions now. It's Doc Rivers is back in. Whitman goes out. So Rivers and Webb are the guards. Wilkins and Willis the forwards and Rollins the center. These things got the unenviable job of trying to deny Chuck uh, Spud Webb. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> That is virtually impossible. Both point guards in there together. First time we've seen that in this series, Webb and Rivers. Ainge giving Webb all the room he wants to go to his left, which they must feel is his offhand or his weaker side. Parrish the rebound again. Robert has been immense on the boards in this one. Time remaining, 9 minutes and 50 seconds. Celtics by 5. Bird has 26 points on the night. Now Seastein and Danny Ainge outside two for Danny yeah, Danny just feels it tonight he's looking for his outside shot much more than uh, he normally does and it's uh, what has he got 12 uh, 16 18 points so he's hitting well from outside timeout is taken again by the Atlanta Hawks the Celtics have opened up a seven point lead 94 87 with 940 to go all right, time on Channel 56, 8 o'clock movie. The unedited presentation of Bob Fosse's All That Jazz and Jack Nicholson, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and Carnal Knowledge on the 8 o'clock movie on Channel 56 in May. Celtics have run six unanswered points on the Hawks in the first two minutes and 20 seconds of this fourth quarter. Dominique is fouled. And the foul will go to... Who got that foul? Scott, Scott Wedman? Wedman was guarding Dominique, but I'm not sure... If the it man, is on Wedman, uh, yes. From behind got him. Look, uh, look for them to isolate Dominic each time now. Uh, I think they feel that he can go around Wedman. So the Celtics are going to have to collapse quickly behind Scott, give him a little help, and of course rotate if they spin that ball uh, back out on top. Dominic's two free throws breaks the Celtics 6 0 run, and it's 94 to 89. Celtics by five. They had led by seven. Biggest lead of the night has been nine. Wedman in and out. And here comes Doc Rivers off to Spud Webb. Ooh, Spud bounced it off his knee but regained control. Oh, there it is. Yeah. The Celtics sending over the trap. Bird's ninth rebound of the game. He is tied up by Dominique Wilkins for a jump ball. See what... What helps you when you establish a matchup, Wedman Wilkins that Atlanta feels they have an advantage on, it sometimes forces bad shots from the player who thinks he's got an advantage. That time they sent the trap over, Wilkins, instead of looking for the free man, still forced a bad shot, you know? So it can work in your favor if you're able to give the man at a disadvantage some immediate help, and that's what the Celtics are doing by, by uh, sending that uh, strong side guard down to help Scott. All right, uh, the ball is out of bounds off the Celtics. It'll be Atlanta ball now. McHale is in and Seastine is out, so move Wedman to a guard position. And McHale is on Wilkins. Okay, good uh, move on the part of uh, Casey. I think we saw a potential problem developing there on that matchup. Webb nearly lost the handle. They kick it back out to Doc Rivers. Now Webb from the corner. Air ball, loose ball, Willis foul on the Celtics. On I think on McHale. McHale. That'll be his fourth if it is. That is the fourth personal foul on Kevin McHale as you look at it again. This big kid continues to do a lot of damage on that offensive backboard. Celtics have, if not dominated the boards in the first couple of games, uh, have had a two or three rebound advantage in each game. Yeah, averaging three. Willis missing the front end of the two-shot foul. He is not one of the better foul shooters on this team. He's only at 65%, but a lot of the rest of his game is, is right there on the pinnacle of stardom. Gets one out of two. The Hawks have cut the Celtics lead to four with eight and a half minutes to play in the game. Dennis Johnson sliding quickly into the front court. Larry Bird on the verge, by the way, of a triple-double tonight. He needs one more rebound, and he'll have double figures in all three categories. Shooting. Couple of big guards in there. Selleck's trying to take advantage of it with Webb and Rivers. Foul of Scott uh, on the Spud Webb. Yeah. Third team foul in Atlanta. Selleck's have three team fouls as well here in the fourth quarter. There's nothing, uh, nothing else by posting them up. Uh, there it is. By doing this a few times, they'll get them over the limit in terms of fouls because Webb doesn't have much 
choice. Now they send uh, Willis over to trap. And Webb makes the steal, and Bird re-steals to Dennis Johnson. And Johnson is tripped by Doc Rivers. Hit the floor very hard. And that is the fourth team foul on Atlanta. And let's take a look at both of these steals. Webb comes in from behind. The little guy is quick, takes a few steps there, and then it throws them off balance, uh, trying to keep the ball in play. Game is getting very, very physical here in the second half. I think Atlanta senses that if they lose this one, it's uh, could be sayonara all next year. So uh, I'll tell you, they were tentative in the first two games. They certainly haven't been tentative tonight. They've uh, given the full effort. Is that a again, sweet move by Parrish? Parrish, yeah. They think by working on the offensive end, you know, it solves the problems. It doesn't. Atlanta has scored just three points in this fourth quarter. Webb, that is the first basket that the Hawks have hit in the fourth quarter, and it comes at the 740 mark. So they went four minutes and 20 seconds before scoring their first basket of the fourth quarter. Well, the Celtics obviously turned on some defensive juices here in this fourth. Again, they're looking into DJ. See, they've got the three other big men out, so they, if they're going to send a double team, they've got to leave someone alone and put extreme pressure on, and that's what they did. 24-second clock went off anyway. Atlanta just uh, ended up without a basket because the 24-second clock went off, and Wilkins had the ball wide open in the open court. The ball seemed to have been released, but in any event... It's going back to Boston. The difference there in the trap in the corner was that they sent the big seven-footer over Willis, yeah, Willis, and he was able to put extreme pressure on the ball, so D.J. was simply not able to find an outlet, and he finally had to put it up for grabs. Mike Fratello arguing that they should have allowed Wilkins' breakaway basket, but the 24-second buzzer had expired, and that means automatically turn the ball over. So his argument is to no avail. Celtics lead by four. Seven minutes to go. They clear the floor for Doc Rivers. However, at least he hasn't had anything spilled on him tonight yet. You're right. That's right, a yes. plus. You better look for the little things. Turn around. McHale the rebound. To Larry Bird to Dennis Johnson, and the Celtics come down with 6.45 to go on a four-point edge. Bird. Has been hot in the second half. He has 26 points to go with 10 assists and 9 rebounds. Larry's runner? No. Rebound, Tree Rollins. To Dominique and a whistle by Jake O'Donnell. Let's see what we have. A foul on Dennis Johnson. No, McKay. He just held a three up there, and Dennis Johnson. Let's take a look. Mitch up. McHale, that's his fifth personal. Well, up to now, there's no foul. Uh, now it's McHale. They give Kevin his fifth personal foul, and that could be a problem for the Celtics here in the final 6.20 of this game. Wedman getting set to check in. Willis straightaway jumper. Rebound, Parrish. I'm surprised to see Willis, the seven-footer out there from 18 feet, taking jump shots. Now, that's the wrong man. They're trapping on Wilkins. He's looking McHale. for the three man. McHale wants Baseline. to uh, <laughs> do a little more damage before he knows Scotty's at the uh, scoring table, ready to come in. Dominique talking to Fratello now finally gets up into the front court. Five minutes and 50 seconds to go. Celtics leading by six on that McHale hoop. Whitman going low to Willis. They get it back to Randy Whitman. And now Rivers on the runner. For Robert Parrish, another rebound. Rivers steals it. Oh, wow. Out the hoop for Doc Rivers. He's very good at that. Sneaking in on the big guy and stealing it out of his hand. He did that in game two at the Garden and brought the Hawks to within one in the fourth quarter, you might remember. Selleck's have dug in defensively here in this quarter, and they've shut down the half-court offense. But the accidental offense, they haven't been as fortunate with. Reach over foul, and Kevin Willis will put Robert Parrish at the foul line as the Hawks are over the limit. It'll be a lot of free throws down the stretch of this one. 5.16 to go, and Atlanta is already over the limit, and the Celtics uh, are at the limit, so they can't commit any more personal fouls, or else Atlanta will be at the line. It's going to get nasty out there. Oh, 
hasn't been exactly a day at the beach uh, either so far. Robert Parrish with two free throws. Chief misses the front end of the two. He'll get one more. Celtics have not shot their free throws well in this series either. Far below their regular season average of 80%. One more for Parrish. Misses them both. And Dominique Wilkins goes like nine feet in the air for the rebound. Not a good omen. Momentum changer. As those of you who have watched the NBA for a while know that that usually will trigger a positive reaction from the, uh, the opponent. Wedman is in replacing McHale. Whitman tries to take it to the hoop. He is fouled. He'll be at the line to shoot two. The Celtics four-point lead with 4.54 to go. Now could be narrowed to two. McHale is back in for the Celtics replacing Wedman. So apparently KC is going to uh, let McHale play the rest of the way or as long as he can with a 5-5. Well, you know, he's going to have to back off Dominique. That's all. And, and give him the outside, as he's been doing anyway, and then look for help from his friends behind to make sure he doesn't uh, get into any uh, contact situation. Whitman, a good free throw shooter. Yeah, he's 77% on the season. This is the first one. One more for Randy Whitman. What you've got to do from here on in, with the officials concerned about the physical nature of the game at this point, and blowing the whistle pretty consistently, you've got to take everything to the basket. Don't settle for those outside shots anymore. I think you're going to see both teams concentrating on their inside game and... Wow, nice play by Johnson. By DJ. Ball is slapped out of bounds by the Hawks with seven on the shot clock. Now yeah, concentrate on their inside game, and the penetrators have got to take it to the basket strong. Here's the save. Night Beautiful. Beautiful. On the inbounds to Dennis Johnson. Not only saves it, but directs the ball. That's important. Tough shot. Missed it. Ball loose. Parrish trying to pick it up, and he does. Good hustle by Robert Parrish. Larry Bird on to Parrish, stolen away by Dominique Wilkins. Here he is, Dominique, and the ball is slapped out of his hands, but he lays it in. Boy, outstanding athletic move by Dominique Wilkins. Spun away from three green shirts and looked to dunk it. That Bird off to Parrish. The up fake and a whistle and a foul on the Atlanta Hawks' Tree Rollins. That'll be his fifth personal foul. The Hawks are within one as Parrish goes to the line. Let's see what happens. There it is. Bird up for the uh, jumper. Notices the Parrish release. And as he does so effectively, gives it to him. Robert. Still thinking about those two a moment ago. Four for nine from the free throw line for he gets that one, though it's a two-point lead. 99 to 97 with four minutes to go in the game. The Hawks are giving it their best shot here in game three. Going down to the wire. Randy Whitman for Atlanta. That's Dennis Johnson on Whitman. They get it to Wilkins and Ainge with a steal. Ball on the floor. Wilkins gets it to Doc Rivers. Good save by Wilkins. Rivers with a penetration block by McHale. Big defensive play by Kevin McHale. He was in there. McHale came out of nowhere. Ainge from outside. Yes! The Celtics lead by four. And Atlanta wants a timeout. 3.26 to play in the basketball game. The Celtics, 101, Atlanta 97. Celtics by four, time remaining, 3.26. Celtics... Well-balanced scoring. Bird, 26. McHale, 20. Ainge, 20. Johnson, 18. The Hawks, Wilkins, 30. Willis, 19. Rivers, 18. The advantage the Celtics have in the stretch of a game like this... Turnover, Atlanta. ...is they can call on that tremendous defensive pressure that they're capable of laying on the opponent out front and behind. And they've got so much more offensive uh, flexibility, so many more people they can go to. Atlanta has neither. McHale has it blocked by Whitman, and he fouls Kevin McHale, and Kevin will be at the line to shoot two. We're down to 2.58 left in this game. Maybe Rollins, they got it. If it is, it's a six. I thought it was Whitman. Yeah, Whitman no, doubles gonna... down, but it is Rollins, and that'll be all. 
I'll tell you what, I think they gave the wrong guy the foul on that one. Rollins has fouled out. Whitman appeared to be the one who got McHale in the hand, and Rollins didn't even appear to have touched him. There's the tree. Never been a scorer in this league, but always a defensive force. In the regular season, he blocked 167 shots. McHale makes it 102-97 as the Celtics lead had been down to one. It is now stretched back out to five. Make it six. Celtics methodically starting to pull away here. They haven't allowed Atlanta any meaningful offense in uh, the last two or three trips down. Both teams at 55% from the floor. Both at 42 of 76. The Celtics, however, have five three-point shots in there. Wilkins stepped out of bounds with it. Boston ball. Well, in the fourth quarter, let's see, Atlanta has scored only 10 points, Coos. And we played uh, 10 and a half minutes, uh, nine and a half minutes. You wondered about that in the third quarter. We talked about when, that. Uh, when the Celtics were going to make a defensive commitment. And that's what's nice about having the kind of strength that they have and talent. You know, they can go in the huddle and Casey can say, okay, gang, you know, let's stop falling around, dig in for 12, and let's get ourselves a win here. Wilkins, freewheeling, double pump, yes, dominate. However, there's always dominate. that force to contend with. There's no defense in the world that would have stopped that move, I don't think. Celtics ask for and get a timeout. With 2.08 left to play in the basketball game, the Celtics lead is four points, 103 to 99. Now let's uh, take a look at this last very nifty basket by Monsieur, Monsieur Dominique. Extraordinary move here. Gets by Dennis, then just twists his body long enough, hangs up there long enough to elude McKeon and get him on his back. And of course, Kevin being careful not to pick up his sixth foul. Time remaining, two minutes to play. Bird. In and out. Rebound. Spud Webb. Spud ahead to Dominique. It's a four-point Celtics lead. Minute and 50 to go. Ainge with a steal. And a foul. DJ thought DJ. he had it. Dominique Wilkins is at the line. That's five on Dennis Johnson. And Dominique will shoot a pair with a minute and 50 to go. And the Celtics lead a slim four points. Now a slim three points. One more for Dominique. He has 33 points in the game. An even slimmer two-point lead now. 1.50 to go. Well, Webb is back in there. Let's see if the Celtics off to uh, take him inside. It would mean Danny Ainge. Wet Whitman is on uh, DJ. The Omni, the folks are on their feet. Paris tries to go along the baseline, kicks it back to Bird. Bird fires. Bird hits! Big hoop by Larry Bird with a minute and a half to go. Spun away from Dominique. 28 points in the game for Bird. A minute and 20 left. The Celtics up by four. Dominique. No, the rebound. Dennis Johnson. Celtics fast break. They've got three on two. McHale off the pass from Ainge. is fouled by Randy Whitman. Kevin wants the breakaway call, but he's not going to get it. Whitman went for the ball. Big rebound by Dennis Johnson off that missed shot. There's the replay of the fast break. Yeah, he made an attempt for the ball. He just couldn't get in there. Kevin was blocking, blocking him off pretty effectively. A minute and 11 seconds left to play in the game. Two free throws for Kevin McHale. Missing the front end of the two. Celtics lead remains four points. And a heck of a basketball game here tonight. That's a five-point Celtics lead. Webb, Whitman, Wilkins, Willis, and Concac for Atlanta. Probably, Johnson, Ainge, uh, Paris, McHale, and Bird. Probably need three and two. Parrish, another big rebound for the Chief. He's the Celtics' leading rebounder on the night. He's in double figures with rebounds with 12. Celtic defense really has done a tremendous job here in the last quarter. They, they haven't given, uh, other than some acrobatic moves by Wilkins, you know, they've made Atlanta oh, work for Beautiful everything. pass by Bird to McHale. McHale is fouled by contact. Two more shots coming for Kevin McHale with 42 seconds left. The Celtics are up by five. I think it's time that 
take it home if uh, it is. Third picks up the double team. Always looks weak side. That's where the free man is. And of course, McHale gives him an awfully big target so he can go cross court on the pass. Normally, you'd discourage the cross court pass if it's to a guard because there's a lot of people in between. McHale hits the two big ones. Two big free throws for Kevin McHale. Just 42 seconds remain to be played in this one, game three, and the Celtics now lead by seven, 108 to 101. News, when we started this fourth quarter, we were talking about in playoff basketball, the fourth quarter is the one that the defense turns on, and the Celtics have certainly done that in this one. They have held Atlanta to just 14 points, and if we take a check of that scorebook, I, I would be willing to bet Atlanta scored no more than three or four baskets in this fourth quarter. Most of them have come from the foul line. Four. Four hoops in the quarter. Uh, certainly far below your average NBA team, and showing you what the Celtics defense has done in this quarter. Yeah, it's nice to know you've got that kind of defensive potential to call on, as we said earlier. It's, it's kind of a security blanket you can sit back on. Casey, I think, felt that they wanted to run and gun throughout the game. You know, he could beat him in that kind of, a, of an up-tempo up posture. And then if he needed to, as he eventually did, he called for the defense to tighten up, and then they pretty much uh, shut down whatever Atlanta has tried to do. 13 rebounds for, 13 points rather for Robert Parrish and 12 or 13 rebounds as he's had a very strong game off the boards. Might be a good time to think about fouling him here. Uh, obviously they need, you know, two or three quick three-pointers. Uh, Especially so kind of uh, getting back into it. So a quick foul would give them two and give you back the ball. Especially in view of the fact they're not a very good foul shooting team. There's a reach-in foul by Dennis Johnson. And that should be number six in the game for DJ. And that's it. He will have fouled out. Now, earlier, they had told us that Johnson had five. Now, they tell us he has five. They, all right, that must have been that foul that we thought earlier was uh, supposed to go to, uh, I guess it was McHale. Or not McHale. Now, earlier, there was a discrepancy on whether or not a foul had gone to Dennis Johnson. But apparently, it did not. One more for Webb. He gets them both, and so the Celtics lead is five with 40 seconds to go. Get it in the hands of your best foul shooter, and you can't get it much better than Bird. A triple team Bird. He gets it in the front court to Johnson. Back to Del Larry Bird. Whoa! Look at that pass that? to Danny Ainge. Showtime. 25 seconds to go, and the Celtics are back up by seven. Great pass by Bird. Dominique, all the way. The runner, no. And a foul on Robert Parrish. And Wilkins will be at the line with 20 seconds to go. Kind of a charity call there. Wilkins just kind of stumbled in and uh, no, looked pass, like he might have walked, but in any event. The pass by Bird was, uh, yeah, that was one of his uh, all-time beauties. That was worth the price of admission alone, I think. We've had an exciting game here. The fans, 12,300 and some odd. A yeah, lot of them sell like fans. They're a little paranoid about that. He had yeah, they Bill sure are. before the game. And I said, what are you expecting, Bill? Sellout, obviously. He said, yeah, well, we've lost 4,000 seats to that convention it's in, but uh, 12,000. He said, probably most of them sell like fans. So they are, yeah, they are paranoid about it. Huh? Celtics lead is back down to five, but only 17 seconds remain to be played, and the Celtics will grab a 3-0 lead in this one. Dominique for Atlanta all the way, lays it in. The lead is down to three. One ten to one oh five, rather. The lead is down to five. It comes into Ainge, and he is fouled with one second left. Dominique cutting it to five, but Ainge is fouled to go down to the other end. Now they bring it to the scoreboard correct to the three-point deficit. One ten to one oh seven. Took them a long time to put that two up there. Now Fratello is arguing about something with the scorekeeper. Yeah, there's Danny looking at the clock, waiting to get clobbered. Mm -hmm. Little Spud Webb obliges. Portello uh, very Portello's hot. Portello's a the scorekeeper. He's not twice in a row. I don't know what he wants. Unless he's yelling about the time. In any event, one more free throw for Danny Ainge. The lead remains three points. One second remains. The lead is four points with a second to go. Comes inbounds to Doc Rivers. Three-point shot. Ball game is over. Celtics win it by four, and they grab a 3-0 lead in this best-of-seven series. Final score here at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia.
the Celtics 111, the Atlanta Hawks 107. Candles and Bob Cousy back at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, where the Celtics have taken a 3-0 lead, a commanding 3-0 lead in this best-of-seven series, beating the Atlanta Hawks 111-107, to and Cousy in the fourth and final quarter when the game was on the line. The Celtics did it with defense. They held the Hawks to just 20 points in that fourth quarter. Not only that, a nice win for Casey without Bill Walton. Uh, yeah, they enjoyed themselves for three quarters and then went to work and gave it the full commitment to fourth. Uh, you know, look for a four-game series as far as I'm concerned. Atlanta led by four. That was their biggest lead of the game at 81 to 77 with about four minutes to go in the third quarter. That's when the Celtics really began to turn this thing around. They went out to a one-point lead after three. After being down by four, they rallied back, went ahead by one, 88-87. Outscored Atlanta 6-0 in the first two minutes of the fourth quarter. Then when it got down to two points at 103 to 101, with uh, two minutes to go, the Celtics put on a 5 nothing spurt, and that, in effect, put the ball game away. But the Celtics did it with the spurts when they needed it. They held Atlanta without a basket from the floor for the first four minutes and 20 seconds of the fourth quarter. That's how strong the Celtics' defense was in the fourth when championships are won and playoff games are won in the NBA. For the Celtics, Larry Bird, 28 points, Kevin McHale, 24, Danny Ainge, 23, Dennis Johnson, 18, Robert Parrish, 13, all five starters in double figures. Bill Walton did not play. They rested the strained knee, and it was just a solid all-around strong uh, win for the Celtics in this game three. So, tonight's lucky Channel 56 Stop and Shop gift certificate winner is Michelle Ames from Needham, Massachusetts. Michelle will be receiving a $250 gift certificate to be used at her nearest Stop and Shop supermarket. And that's about it from here. Tonight's light beer from Miller, most valuable player of the game, 23 points on a solid all-around floor game is Danny Ainge. A donation will be made in Danny's name to the Red Auerbach Fund, and it will be matched by the Boston Foundation. Also, we want to thank Mr. Charlie Doulis of Jimbo's Restaurant, contributing $10 per point scored by the Celtics in our Channel 56 telecasts. And my very poor mathematics tells me that's over $1,000, about, let's see, what, $1,100 or so. This money, too, will be headed for the Red Auerbach Fund. Be sure to watch Channel 56 for the dates and times of any other possible playoff telecast here on 56. For my partner, Bob Cousy, this is Gil Santos saying goodnight from Atlanta. And as a reminder, I can be heard weekday mornings with all the latest sports on WBZ Radio 1030. Boston Celtics basketball on Channel 56 has been produced all year long and expertly well by Lou Schumann. Stay tuned for the news at 10, coming up next right here on Channel 56. Good night.